Packer and Crow just wanted to sneak his $7 million loan, Benny Way. Not a bad way to do business. No, not bad at all. And I imagine nearly the vast majority <laughs> would have gone to this fellow Matty Keen. Good to have you in, buddy. You saw a little bit of that seven mil? Uh, no, not at all. I'm uh, doing my apprenticeship in the coaching ranks, boys. I'm at the bottom of the run. But, uh, yeah, an amazing act of um, generosity from our co-owners and puts our club in a really financial, a really great financial spot. How much confidence does it give the playing group? Because we always talk about front office and how important it is to the way blokes feel on the park. Does that security really translate throughout the club? Yeah, I think it's an overall all package, really. So we've got a great coach and a great front office and now a couple of owners who have... Um, who have put aside a seven million dollar debt so I suppose the complete package for our play players mean that they can focus solely on the footy and um, and hopefully it will bide really well for our 2016 season. You can have all the money in the world but the salary cap is still the salary cap and if you want to have some gun players you need to squeeze a few out. To bring Sammy Burgess back a few had to make way do you think it was worth the price and is there any chance that if it all goes awry there will be an underlying sentiment that perhaps it wasn't the right call? Yeah, no, I don't think so. Um, everyone knows what a wonderful player Sammy is. He's also such a, a wonderful person as well and he brings so many qualities to our footy team uh, on and off the pitch that uh, I think he was worth every cent. Obviously we've had to lose some great boys and some great mates of mine to, um, to entice Sammy to come back. Um, but yeah, 2016 is going to be known uh, for South Sydney for a lot of different reasons. I, su I suppose it'll be the season that Semi came back, but hopefully halfway through the year we won't be talking about Sam Burgess as much as how well the Bunnies are going um, collectively as a group. It's a seriously tight-knit bunch, though, and when you lose guys like Dylan Walker, Tim Grant, Chris McQueen, they all sort of have to depart. There must be a level of resentment that blokes think, Wow, this guy's coming and he's had to tear the group apart a bit. Yeah, I don't think resentment's the right word. Um, everyone knows that footy's a, um, a business now, unfortunately, and sometimes great mates and great players get caught in, in the crosshairs, I suppose, of, of dealings. But um, uh, I suppose the question comes down to, do you want Sam Burgess in your team? And the answer, anyone who supports South Sydney is yes. So unfortunately, we've had to lose a couple of boys. Um, salary caps are tight in the NRL, but I suppose that's what makes our competition so even. It helps that he thinks he's going to return an even better player given his stint in rugby as well. So we'll wait and see whether he is correct in that assumption. Everyone keeps telling us this Cody Walker kid is just outrageous. You would have seen him pretty closely. Are they right? Yeah, um, Cody, the funny thing is he's not actually a kid. He's 26, Cody. So he's been, he's been biding his time for a long, long time. Sadly, that's a kid to me. Is that a kid to you? <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, you're right. Um, and he's... Um, he comes from Casino, my little country town there in New South Wales too, so he, he comes from good stock, he's a good kid, he's been working uh, really, really hard at his game for a long, long time. He spent a, uh, 12 months down there with the Melbourne Storm, so uh, he's going to get his opportunity uh, in round one and uh, I, can't, I can't wait to see him play. Luke Keery obviously didn't have it all go his own way and won't be playing in round one as you touch on so that's his likely replacement i just want to get your thoughts on him because there's a fair bit of talk about what sort of character he was particularly when he had a big tiff with the boss and got kicked out is he a good kid he's a legend luke here he's a legend he's um he's one of those guys i don't like using this this saying too much but he's a great Aussie bloke you know he's just <laughs> right. he wears thongs he should wear stubbies he's um, he's just one of those guys that if you get the opportunity to have a beer with him it's awesome he's just a champion young fella he loves his footy he loves his family he's just an out and out great bloke and really good for our club what's he doing then falling out with another great Aussie bloke in Russell Crowe <laughs> if he's such a good fella <laughs> just two blokes who uh, potentially had a, a, a good night that went a bit wrong I suppose so he um, yeah Kiri's, uh, he's got small man syndrome, that's the first thing that I need to point out and he, um, yeah, it was just one of those things that happen when, it, when grown men have probably a bit too much to, to, a bit too much of a good time I should say and uh, yeah, everyone's moved on at the club for sure. You did touch on the Melbourne Storm before when you were detailing that youngster and his fortunes. I want to focus on a veteran in Billy Slater, hasn't been seen since round 10. If you can just give us some insight into the man that is and what motivates him and what will drive him and the other a couple of big name players we know who feature down there and while they will be on the improve again this year. Yeah, Billy Slater's want to win is outrageous, along with um, Cameron Smith and Cooper Cronk. 
you know, they talk about uh, young guys coming in and these guys setting an example. The example they set is that every week when they put their boots on, they will do anything to win for their footy team. They do it for Queensland, they do it for Australia. So um, Billy's saying that he wants to play for another two seasons. I think he just signed a new contract. Uh, I've got every confidence that he'll see those two years out. He's such a competitive fella. And uh, I suppose what goes to show the true competitiveness was last year's Game three in, uh, game 2 sorry, in State of Origin. Before that game... Billy knew that his season was over and realistically he shouldn't play, but he got needled up, he got strapped up, he gave himself every opportunity to help Queensland in that, in that second game. Unfortunately, New South Wales, well, not fortunately for us, but New South Wales <laughs> won, but um, you know, just goes to show what type of character Billy has. And um, I'm hearing some rumours that he mightn't be right for round one, but he'll play the large majority of this season for sure. We're going to be interested to see how the Bunnies go in round one. They're taking up, taking up against, taking on, big year. Pardon, getting excited. <laughs> the Roosters on Sunday should be an absolute ripper. Matty King, good luck for that one. Thanks for your Thank time. Thank you, boys. Anytime.